Hey, welcome back to Geology. So excited. We are starting our new unit, which has to do pretty much with the building blocks of rocks and soil and everything, all the land features we're going to talk about and the mechanics behind it and everything. So we have to understand the small itty bitty building blocks first. So this unit is introduction to minerals and rocks where we'll talk about clearly um, minerals that make up our igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks. So today we're gonna go even further and talk about, before we get to a mineral, we have to understand the idea of elements and our protons, neutrons, and electrons. So today is kind of a review day of some chemistry stuff to get us ready for um, the big picture as we move into how minerals are formed. We'll actually grow our own minerals in class and uh, kind of taking a look at different things. So. Notes that matter, pun on the term matter. All right, let's get started. So first off, um, once again, we are going to be starting off really small. So as we move through this year, we'll talk about things that are itty, 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 bitty, and then things that are super, super large that take millions and hundreds of thousands of years to form. And so we start off small with our atom, with our protons and our neutrons in our nucleus, and then our electrons circulating around in the electron cloud. These atoms, when combined can or when by themselves can form elements and so elements make up our periodic table and so we're going to start kind of there today talking about um, how these elements are then the building blocks for other things so an element is a pure atom that is made up of the same number of protons neutrons and electrons and so they have their own specific place on the periodic table and there are families that go along with the elements that all have same types of characteristics and physical and chemical properties um, such as the alkali metal or our um, noble gases uh, you could think about our transition metals all these different types of things that we see on the periodic table there's a rhyme and a reason on for why they are placed where they are Sometimes elements will combine to form molecules. The simplest of ones that we can think of or that I have a picture of here is two hydrogen and an oxygen. So that's our water molecule. And then from there, we have larger molecules that can produce more and more, which are compounds. Over time, as these grow into bigger substances, we get minerals, which um, that's where we're going to spend time talking about um, is what is a mineral how is it formed it's not man-made it actually is made geologically in the earth um, naturally occurring that's what we're going to talk about and the minerals are the building blocks for rocks and so we'll talk about what minerals we can find in our igneous metamorphic and sedimentary rocks but these minerals here are super important to what we're going to be discussing so once again, kind of breaking it down small, atoms are made up of protons, which are positively charged, neutrons, which have no charge at all, and our electrons have a negative charge. And then those protons and electrons are causing an electrical current that allows them to, the in the nucleus, they're kind of vibrating, and then the electrons are actually moving in uh, different types of orbits around the nucleus. So, as we look at our protons or our atom, we can then put them into different character characteristics due to how many protons they have, how many electrons they have, and we'll talk about how neutrons can change things and make things unstable too. So on the periodic table, when we look at a element symbol, we can draw several pieces of information from that, that that element or that knowledge and how it how it is displayed on the periodic table. So if we take a look, I've given an example of potassium. We'll use potassium quite a bit in this class. Lots of rocks are made up of potassium, especially potassium feldspar, and we'll talk about more about that. Uh, potassium's symbol is K, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but you'll we'll get used to it because you'll hear me even say, well, that's K feldspar, and you'll be like, what? Trust me, you'll you'll get used to it. It's a pinkish 
pinkish color mineral. Um, and so there's other things that we can tell. So this is the element symbol. Clearly they've given the name down here at the bottom, potassium in our symbol. And then we have the number 19 up here in the left-hand corner and 39.10 in the right-hand corner. And these are two really important pieces of information that sometimes we're gonna, we're gonna need to go back and kind of look at. So first is the atomic number number 19 so the periodic table goes in a new atomic number order one two three four five six seven eight potassium is number 19 on the periodic table and that has to do with its increasing mass and size and what we mean by that is that the atomic mass of potassium is one potassium one gram of potassium pure element would be 39.1 mass or um, we'll talk about as it gets a little bit further into other things but don't think to chemistry where I'm going to have you converted to moles or anything like that just understand that it's 39 and so once again what we're looking at is how many protons neutrons and electrons are making up this mass and that's 19 19 protons 19 electrons those are always equal to our atomic number and that's what this next one is going to go through. So um, as you can see, we've drawn out a diagram of potassium and we've then given it its energy levels on how many electrons on the outside. So once again, we can draw some information just by that picture on the periodic table to help us figure out a few different things. So first off, once again, potassium is number 19 um, and a couple of different things. In most elements, the number on the protons equals the number of electrons. So there are 19 protons, therefore there are 19 electrons, which you can find by just looking at the atomic number. So that's what I just did right there. And then we can even count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 electrons have been displayed on the outermost shells of that element. To find the neutrons, all we have to do is take the atomic mass minus the atomic number. So let's go back and take a look. So the atomic mass of this object is 39, and I'm going to grab out my calculator here, 39.10, and we're going to subtract that from, whoops, 39.10, and we're going to subtract that from 19, and that gives me 20.1. So that means that there are 20 neutrons in the element potassium. And the, finally, the number of protons determine what atom it is. So the number of protons. Electrons sometimes can get a little funky. Neutrons can definitely become funky, especially when we get into talking about radioactive decay. Um, but our protons are normally the stand strong. If we know how many protons, we can figure out everything else. So when elements get funky, we call those isotopes. And so the isotopes have to do with our radioactive decay, our neutrons. And sometimes, and we'll, we'll spend a lot of time talking about radioactive decay as we kind of move forward, is that what happens is that sometimes the element is going to become unstable. So, um, for example, lots of elements form deep down in the Earth's crust. And so they are put under a lot of pressure and temperature. And as we bring them to the surface, sometimes they become very unstable. There is a element that actually this happens to. It was brought to us from Canada by glaciers that came down during the last ice age towards um, Ohio and northern Kentucky. So if you think about it, if you've ever driven in Ohio and Indiana, really, really flat. That is because the glaciers came through and kind of acted like a bulldozer and plowed down all of the land features. They kind of stopped here in uh, northern Kentucky, especially Boone County. We are actually prone to the isotope radon, which is a um, radioactive element that is normally found way down underneath the Earth's crust. 
And as the um, glaciers came through, it stirred up the radon and brought it up to the surface. And so now in northern Kentucky, we have a problem of radon leaking into homes, which has been linked to different types of cancer. So if you have a newer home, I bet if you ask your parents or guardians or whoever, um, if we have a radon emitter, you probably do, meaning that you probably have some kind of white PVC pipe that is siphoning um, somewhere in your basement and it will circle and come outside the house. It's taking, it actually has a fan on it that's going to pull the enter or pull the radon gas that sometimes will accumulate in your basement and leave it to um, the outside environment because if it's stuck in the basement and it keeps continuing to grow that can be really hazardous for humans health so um, more than likely if you especially if you don't have a walkout so if you have a basement where you don't have a door that you can like go outside more than likely you probably have some kind of radi radon mitigator that's going to suck the gas out and shoot it out into the atmosphere um, compounds and mixtures, uh, kind of just a review. A compound is going to be the same throughout, whereas a mixture is going to be different things. So I like to think of like a compound is that you can't tell that anything looks different. Um, whereas a mixture kind of looks like, oh, I can see the chunks of different material that have kind of been smashed together. So compounds, same throughout. Mixtures, part kept own properties can easily separate kind of back out our minerals. This is where I want to spend a lot of time because we're going to talk about this for the next week or two. So minerals have very specific um, properties that are um, important to kind of realize as we move through. The first is that they are naturally occurring, meaning that they are not man-made at all. They are created here on earth um, through natural geologic earth processes. And we'll talk about several of the different processes, but um, they are all purely found in the earth's crust. All minerals are solids. We can melt them down, we can burn them, we can do all kinds of different things, but it, to be a true mineral, it has to be in its solid state. A mineral also has a definite chemical composition, or think about it, a recipe. So for example, we will use the mineral silica quite often, which has the recipe or chemical composition of SiO4. Whenever you are looking at silica, it will always have SiO4. Gold is another example. Gold is a mineral and it is always Au. Always, always, always. It's a pure, it will actually call it, it's a pure native mineral. It, it is always just Au. Doesn't mix with any other elements. Um, another example of what minerals are made up of is atoms arranged in a pattern, and we'll talk about this, is that they form in different types of tetrahedrals or lattice patterns or almost like plates, and we'll kind of talk about how those arrange. And the bonding between those elements are going to sometimes be really strong and sometimes really weak. And then finally, inorganic, meaning they are not formed of anything that was living. So no plant, animal, virus, blah, 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 whatever it may have been, does not exist in a mineral. It is naturally occurring from the elements that are found within the Earth's crust. So then that leads, a lot of times students will ask, well, we have room for new minerals to be found as well as space exploration gets further and further. Sometimes we can find different minerals that have formed on other planets. So these are some of the common minerals that you will um, will see and encounter most often. Once again, um, there's that potassium, sodium, iron, aluminum, magnesium. These are all ones that we will encounter very often. And then once again, like I was talking about earlier, our native minerals, pure gold, silver, copper, all made up of the same element. So we'll continue to talk about minerals and really get into their characteristics. Hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you soon.